Brian from BioFire here to answer your question about what makes the BioFire smart gun different from previous attempts at smart gun technology, which is a great question. Um, the history of, of smart guns definitely is a colorful one and, and largely a, a lot of the attempts have failed. Uh, and so like I'll say we're not going to trash on anybody that's tried to do this before. Everybody's trying to solve the same problem that we are, which is you know people who shouldn't have access to, to your gun um, helping to prevent unauthorized access to your gun, basically. Um, and so I think the biggest thing that differentiates our, our solution versus other attempts that have been out there previously are just the amount of conversations that we had with people before we actually built anything. Um, so we basically started with solving the problems uh, that existed in home defense, kind of talking with people about what, what's great about the current solution, what's not great, and, uh, and, and then building a solution that fit those. And so in talking with, with gun owners, one of the big problems that they um, basically alluded to is this problem of like, how do I, I'd love to be able to store my gun unlocked uh, where I can quickly get access to it, but I'm also worried about um, who potentially might be able to get access to it as well. Small children, somebody breaking into my house, maybe a roommate I don't know super well. Uh, and then, so we basically spent a lot of time talking with those folks about what would address those solutions. And then we created a list of requirements and built to that. Uh, so we were already starting with solving a problem that people actually wanted. And I think with previous attempts to, to, to solve this technology, they were maybe more of what I would call proof of concepts of the technology, but not directly addressing those concerns. You know, there were questions about calibers, you know, being the right caliber for a home defense firearm. Um, one of the big issues that previous attempts ran into was the ability to hack it. Um, so one of the things that we addressed very early on um, was trying to build a system from, or was building a system from the ground up that uh, would be very, very hard to circumvent. And so that's what led us down the path, a part of what led us down the path of doing an, uh, an electronic fire control system or fire by wire. So with our gun, this is the only handgun in the world where there's no direct linkage between the trigger and shooting the gun. There's no uh, piece that could be taken out of this gun to turn it back into a regular gun. And most of the previous attempts that we're aware of of smart gun technology were going that inhibitor route. So one of the big problems with that is uh, all you have to do to, to disprove the technology is go in and break that piece off or you know apply a magnet to the side of it to move it out of the way and then it, then it shoots like a regular gun which defeats the purpose of it entirely. So our system kind of works the complete opposite. This gun only shoots if somebody's holding it, they're an authorized user, and the system uh, senses a trigger pull. If all three of those things are true, then the gun will shoot, um, but but it won't otherwise. So um, that's pretty much, uh, there's a lot of other small details about the gun that are a little bit different than previous attempts, but we really look at this as a, as a total solution. That's all comes from a user-centered design approach of talking with people at the beginning, hearing their concerns, um, asking about what they're looking for, and then building something that addresses those needs. And so BioFire Smart Gun is essentially a handgun that knows who's holding it. And that's what differentiates it from other handguns that are out there. So with a conventional handgun, uh, some people would say dumb guns. I don't really like to say that. We, we still like all kinds of other handguns that are out there for, for various reasons. Um, but uh, conventional handgun does not differentiate between uh, who is shooting it. You know, basically anybody that picks up that gun um, can fire it. So it, it doesn't know if it's you, it doesn't know if it's a bad guy or, you know, your five-year-old nephew. Uh, it will still fire if somebody pulls the trigger. With a smart gun, um, the gun will only fire for somebody who um, it recognizes as an authenticated user. So that's the biggest thing that differentiates a smart gun from a conventional handgun. So basically, the smart gun's designed for anybody who wants total control over their home defense firearm and who has access to it and how they store it. So one of the big problems with conventional handguns is you have to go through this exercise in your mind of how do I store this gun safely to make sure that if I have small kids in the house, it's harder for them to reach or harder for them to get access to it, uh, but also how do I quickly get to it in an emergency. And so this is really the product that's uh, designed for them. So somebody who wants to be able to completely control where it's stored, uh, put it in the optimal place for them to get quick access to it, but also gives them peace of mind um, to not have to worry about somebody else getting access to it. BioFire Smart Gun can't be hacked with magnets. You're probably asking that question because you've seen a previous attempt at a smart gun, it's a very famous one where somebody applied, I think it was like a $15 magnet against the side and they moved the piece that was blocking the trigger out of the way and they were able to just shoot the gun uh, like it was a normal, normal handgun. 
And so with our system, we were well aware of that attempt before we even started. And so we basically had to start with a framework of how do we build a secure system that's very hard for somebody to, to circumvent. And so the system being fire by wire, basically there's no direct linkage between the trigger and shooting the gun. Um, so there's no piece in there you can go in and, and take out through either physical means or moving out of the way with a magnet or anything like that that would allow you to shoot the gun. Uh, it's basically a, the trigger is basically a switch on our gun. Um, so the gun will only fire if somebody who's authorized is holding it. Um, and, uh, it and the trigger and the computer senses a trigger pull. If all three of those things are true, then the gun will shoot. Uh, but there's really no easy way to turn this back into a convention gun. So one of the big questions we get about the smart gun, it being different from other handguns, is it involves a battery um, that uh, basically helps the computer unlock the gun and, and allows you to shoot. So that's a very big difference from conventional handguns that are out there. So a lot of questions people have is how long could I actually get on a battery charge? Um, so one of the things we'll start with is if you look at the gun, one of the things that looks very different from this compared to conventional guns is the amount of space under the barrel here that we've occupied with um, just basically polymers and components. A lot of that is battery. We basically packed as much battery as we can fit within this space. Uh, and so that was basically to give people as much um, standby time on a battery as possible. So one of the key decisions we made early on in the smart gun design is to have it go into a low power mode whenever there's not somebody actively interacting with it. Um, so there's a number of sensors on the gun that are basically looking for somebody to pick it up. So you can see if I touch the back of the gun here, it wakes up and it's looking for me to, it's like trying to process my biometrics at that point. And then if it gets those biometrics, it's charging up the gun to basically make it able to shoot. Um, so those are the processes that take up the most battery power. So whenever somebody's not actively interacting with the gun, we want it to go into as low power mode as possible to extend your battery life. And so what we're targeting there is multiple months that you can have the gun be in that low power sleep mode. Um, and so basically that allows you to store the gun off charger. For most people, we've heard they're gonna probably keep the gun on the charger just like they would with a cell phone or another, another component with a battery. Um, but for those of you who choose to maybe store it under a pillow, or you know, in a in a glove compartment or something like that, um, trying to maximize the amount of time that you can do that and still be able to pick it up and have battery left to to shoot it. Um, and so, uh, for most people though, we do recommend that they keep it on a charger. Just make sure that you're fully topped off. You don't have to worry about battery in that scenario. And so that's one of the reasons that we've designed the docking station uh, to be modular, so that we'll have different versions of the cradle. So there's like one version here that we've shown and it's on the website where you can basically plug the gun into the dock and it's all contained in one system. Um, and so that's one solution for being able to interact with the gun and keep it topped off. There's other versions of this that we'll do in the future that are like hard points where you can basically mount this in a, in a holster that charges the gun behind a nightstand or behind a headboard or something like that. Um, so that way you don't even have to worry about battery life. Whenever you go to grab it in an emergency, it's right where you wanted it and the battery is fully topped off. So for most people, they're probably doing that. Um, but we do want to make sure that if you're in that scenario where you're off the charger, uh, you've got as much uh, battery life as possible. So basically two big solutions for that for us. We're using every millimeter of space that we could on the gun to add battery and then basically creating the architecture to have that low power sleep mode. So whenever you're not actively interacting with it, it's preserving as much battery as possible. So that's a little bit of a high level overview of how battery works on our gun and what you can expect when using it. How would the BioFire smart gun hold up against EMPs or electromagnetic pulses? So for anybody that uh, isn't up to date on this, one of the questions we get a lot is how would this hold up in the event of a nuclear explosion and the resulting electromagnetic pulse that is is that takes out electronics within a you know range from the blast. Um, so one of the first things we'll say, this is not something we've done a lot of testing on because it's really hard to do atomic weapons testing in the post 1950s world. Uh, it's also really bad for the environment. So it's not it's really hard to test for these scenarios. Uh, but the good news is there are some. Uh, publications out there that we can reference. And so I'll say I've become a little bit of a researcher on EMP since we launched the smart gun. And it's actually a pretty good document that the, the state of Washington put out some time ago. We'll link it below if you wanna take a look. It talks a little bit about EMPs and the public. And so as you dig into that, one of the things that it will tell you is if the nuclear explosion is in the kiloton range, uh, which I'm not gonna 
go through all the list of countries and their atomic arsenals and uh, yields of each. It'll let you do a little bit of that research on your own. Uh, but if the weapon's in the kiloton range, the, it's a little bit bad news, bad news scenario for you. Um, if you were the basically the range of the EMP blast uh, does not exceed the explosive range of the bomb. So while uh, EMPs are terrible for electronic devices, basically will fry them to the point where they can't work anymore. Um, you probably also got fried in the blast of the bomb as well. So a little bit of a bad news, bad news scenario for you. On the good news side, um, even a minimal amount of metal shielding actually does go a long way to protecting electronics. And so while the Biofire Smart Gun is covered in polymers, there is a metal frame inside which houses a good number of the electronics. Um, so I won't say it's EMP proof, but there is some level of shielding that's in there that helps. Um, so I'll also say the gun's primarily designed for home defense. We put a lot of research into the different scenarios that you might run into in a home defense scenario and tactical nuclear explosions did not come up in that research. So I'll say if you're in a situation where you're seriously worried about somebody is coming after your belongings or your family using nuclear weapons, uh, you have made some bad choices in your life. Uh, we wish you the best, but uh, I'm not sure there's too much we can do for you in a typical home defense scenario. So a little bit of an overview of EMPs and how they might interfere with the smart gun and obviously do your own research and take a look at what's out there. But uh, we love the question and any other questions that you have for us, please send them our way.